You could call it musical fusion. Songs that express a bicultural experience written and performed by a musical artist who grew up in both Nicaragua and the United States. Elena Lacayo. Well, the band was formed in 2011, um, and we started here in D.C. Her group is called Elena and Las Fulanas. Los Fulanos means uh, so-and-so. It's actually a term that's used universally in Spanish. It means like so-and-so. So like, oh, I don't know that guy's name, Fulanito. You know, like, that so-and-so, that Joe Schmo. I was born in the U.S. in 1984, which is in the middle of the revolution. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. My parents had just gotten here with their three kids. Um, and we lived in the States until 1992. We lived in Louisiana and then we lived in Miami, Florida. And then in 92, we went back to Nicaragua. And so I grew up there from ages eight to 18. I went to school in Indiana. I went to Notre Dame Catholic University over there. Um, I came to DC initially to work on social justice issues. So uh, initially I came as like an intern at a Catholic organization and then um, I fell into working in the issue of immigration because I knew a lot about being an immigrant and how the immigration system works just because of my life experience. Elena's life experience also included something else she'd learned a lot about. Music. But I've been, I would say, one of the biggest influences for me is Soa Estéreo, which is like really big uh, Argentine rock band out of, uh, yeah, Art of Ar Argentina. They were huge. Um, Shakira for like her old stuff. She was like, I mean, I like to describe. When people ask me to describe who my music sounds most like, I'd like to think that it sounds like Shakira's older stuff, because she wrote really awesome and deep songs before she turned to English. But I also like a lot of stuff like uh, American stuff like uh, Counting Crows and uh, Ben Folds. Those are the things I grew up on. But using all of those influences to create her own sound presented a problem. That was the most difficult part about when I decided to pursue music more seriously, is that I had songs in English and in Spanish, and they had been influenced by such diverse kinds of music. So when I started writing music, I started writing music songs in English and in Spanish. Um, and when I decided to form a band, I was like, well, can this be done? Can you, can you actually like do a project that's both in English and in Spanish? <laughs> but I decided I really wouldn't, wasn't gonna be able to do the project if I couldn't be a, I, authentically myself and I couldn't be true to all the parts of myself and that required for me to actually be able to do it bilingually. It does really make things complicated when you've lived half of your life in one place and half of your life in another. In addition to combining musical styles, the band uses an unusual array of instruments. We use 
use a broad range of instruments. Um, our percussionist uses a cajon, which is originally from, um, I think, Peru or somewhere in South America. And uh, I use a ukulele, which is from Hawaii. I also use a banjo, which is clearly an American instrument. And of course, guitar, bass, and uh, we also have a violinist. And so that's, that's another unique aspect of, of our stuff. One of her bandmates, Andrew Northcutt, plays percussion. I met her through this thing in D.C. It's called a Flash Band. Which is a project here in D.C. where a lot of musicians get together and formed impromptu bands for a month. And a month later, uh, you play a show for like uh, four songs, 30 minutes. It's really fun and it's a way to meet a lot of new musicians, so it worked out for me. She ended up hiring me for her band. <laughs> Elena and Las Tulanas played for about three years before making an album in 2014. So making an album is a lot of work. I mean, the music industry is a very different world than it used to be even like 10 years ago. And there's many advantages, um, one of which is that you can do stuff without having a record label necessarily attached to you. And you can do things independently. So we actually did an online fundraising campaign through a program called Indiegogo in which you request uh, for you know, your fans and followers and your supporters to donate money to a cause. And our cause for this one was making the record. Uh, we raised about $8,000 uh, to make the record. <laughs> I'm not that good yet. Elena hopes she can continue to incorporate Nicaragua into her music. I recently acquired a marimba when I went back home, um, and I got uh, a specific kind that's very authentically Nicaraguan, and so I'm learning how to play that. So that's one of the goals that I have for, for the future, um, just to be more of an ambassador of my own culture, um, which is a small little country that a lot of people you know, don't know a lot about. Success is really a relative thing. Um, sometimes I wonder what would happen if I got really popular and uh, I don't know if that's the ultimate goal. I, I mean, I think my ultimate goal is I want to make music and I want to be able to live making music. And if I can find a way to make that happen, that's, so, that's where I'm going to be happiest. Two worlds uniting to create a new world through song.